Today we're going to do a walkthrough of an audition on ACX. Recently I received a message on ACX from an author asking me if I'd be interested in performing an audition for a book he has available on Amazon and looking for an audiobook. This happens occasionally. You have your profile out there with some samples and um, an author will browse those or hear your work somewhere else and ask you if you'd be interested. So we're going to take a look at this process from start to finish and we'll see if we get a job out of it or not. So the book we're looking for is titled Uneducated. Now the link he gave me was to Amazon. So I'm going to take the title here and copy it because I need to find the project on ACX in order to, to submit. Titles accepting auditions. We'll paste that title, Uneducated. And we have the book by Joe Hinchliffe. Some very general uh, metadata about it, its estimated length, what range they are saying they want to pay. And of course, almost everything on here is negotiable. Uh, some things about the distribution that for the most part won't matter to you. Notice this one is asking for an accent, but he knows I am an English speaker with a North American accent, so he's willing to forgo that. I've received several books and set up long-term relationships with people that were asking for British accents, but I asked them up front, I don't have a British accent, but I like your book. Uh, can I submit an audition? And they'll come back and say, no, I really need the accent, or yes, please do, and you proceed from there. Now, as you look on here, there are some things that can guide you whether you want to do this audition or not. One of the most appropriate ones are right here. The sales rank and the performance on Amazon. On ACX, however, most of these books are fairly new. And while they have to be on Amazon before they make it to ACX, they don't have to be there for very long. So if you have a book that's only been on Amazon for a few days, you won't have any, may not have any ratings and a sales rank won't have been generated yet. If that's going to affect your process, especially as you start looking at royalty share books, this number is important and we'll work on this more in the future. Uh, you don't want to do a royalty share book expecting a lot of money if this number's up in the hundreds of thousands or up in the million. The higher the number here, the less the book has sold recently. And the rating, of course, is going to have a great impact on uh, Amazon performance. Now, I will do this audition because I've been invited, so I don't really care that there's nothing here yet. If I wanted to see the information, I can jump to Amazon through their link and find out about the book. And there's nothing much new here. Uh, again, if there, if there had been some sales, I would have some more information here with the uh, sales rank and so forth. Just tell me a little bit about the author. This, this particular author has written four or five books. He has some others here. So let's jump back to ACX and we'll do the process of the narration. I'm sorry, of the audition. So in the audition, if you go to this page, some clear instructions, record your performance, upload it, leave a note if you want. If you don't hear back, they suggest that you uh, send them a message maybe every few days, every week or so. It depends on your business process if you want to uh, keep track of all your auditions and send follow-up notes um, I've not heard from authors either way, whether they appreciate or do not appreciate that. I don't make this a practice because there's a lot of auditions that go on and try to keep track of what you've done, who you've sent notes to, uh, and whether they actually have any impact on the work that you get. I'm not a fan. I don't do those. But if you're more selective, if you're looking for more high profile books, if you want to sell yourself a little bit more then work on the follow-up messages and then keep an eye on your inbox. Sometimes the audition script will be here. Uh, occasionally the author will include some notes on the performance, generally more for fiction books or books from publishers where they'll tell you the style they want, 
what the voice should sound like, the pacing, the tone, and so forth. If it's an independent author that's publishing this book on his own, which most things are on ACX, you'll get just a script. Let's download this and see what we have. If we take a look at this, it looks uh, as you would expect for a nonfiction book. There's uh, things you would look for might be the level of technicality, if there's a lot of jargon or foreign phrases and so forth. This is very straightforward in the look of it. Now, this is a short piece because it's just the audition. Sometimes authors will send you the entire manuscript for the book. This looks very straightforward. Uh, we'll do a simple read on this one and package it up and send it in. Now, I'm not doing this recording within Audacity. We've been working in that a lot in the past. Here, I've moved over into Ardor, which is the DAW that I use for the vast majority of my recordings. If you're familiar with any of the other packages, this has some very close similarities to uh, Adobe or any others that you use, but it is open source and therefore it's license free and there's no cost to use it. Uh, you can't support them, which if you find Audacity to be useful, I would suggest that you do and uh, they would ask that you do, but it's a great little package and does uh, everything you'll need for voiceover work. Now, uh, let's get this started. We'll roll the tape and we'll do our audition. Introduction. Uneducated. Having a sh... Now see, I messed that up in the first try. We'll stop that. No need to even keep that. And take two. Introduction. Uneducated. Having or showing a low level of education. The English school system is one of the greatest globally, yet it's out of date and inadequate. Compared with other education systems, it ranks as one of the best. But does that make it satisfactory? Most education systems worldwide, including ours, are built to produce employees. So but here we are back again. Didn't want to make you sit through that whole audition. A couple of times I had to stop and start over again. Did my edits as normal to get a decent file. Now this is uh, about average length for an audition. This ran about two and a half minutes. When you're auditioning for audiobooks, it's different than other voiceover work. Commercials and so forth will generally be very short reads. An audiobook, the author is going to want to hear more most times. Now, sometimes you will get an audition track and they want you, you know, to read a 10 minute section, entire chapters or pages and pages. I wouldn't recommend that. It takes a lot of your time. It really is, after a while, something that takes an emotional toll. Two or three minutes is enough for most authors uh, to get an idea of what the entire book is going to sound like, especially if they're picking their sample logically and realistically they're going to find something that um, is representative of the book and that's what they'll have you record don't go with a 10 minute thing here i assure you most authors if they are asking you to record a 10 minute session they're not listening to 10 minute auditions for every audition they get they're hearing the first little bit and moving on so uh, two and a half minutes is about average probably longer than most authors will listen to but i've got it here the process within Ardor is very similar to Audacity. I'm going to highlight the chunk that I want. Let's tighten that up a little bit on the front. I will export it. It's just going to a location for now. This is uh, uneducated by the author. I suggest when you send auditions that you include your name within the file name so that they have an idea of which one is there. You would hate to lose a job because the author uh, has your audition but can't remember where he heard it. He got on ACX, but of the dozens of auditions he had, which one was this? Uh, so help them out a little bit. Include your name. You don't normally slate these. You wouldn't state your name 
within the audition itself, put it in the file, and they'll have the information they need should that instance arise. Uh, I'm just going to dump this out as a standard MP3. This is going to be normalized to our normal normalization, negative 3.1 decibels, so that it will sound appropriate without blasting his ears. Some people will tell you to send these auditions at minus one because it sounds louder, and that's true, uh, but loudness isn't the thing we're looking for here. So normalized. I, I don't compress this. Uh, at this point, it's really not necessary. And get back to ACX. All right, so I've done the audition. I have an MP3. I will send a message. Thanks for the invitation. Very short reads. An audiobook, the author is going to want to hear more most times. Now, sometimes you will get an audition track and they want you, you know, to read it. So in the message, uh, just simple business transaction. Thank you for the invitation. It's attached. And I like to put a disclaimer in because I don't know what he was looking for in this audition. All I know is the topic and the book that he referred to where he heard my voice previously. So I took a stance on this that is somewhat formal and might not be what he wants. He might want a more conversational, a more informal feel. I want to put that in the message. Here's how I recorded it. And if you want that to change, just let me know. If you want a more conversational term, uh, if you want a more conversational approach, let me re-record it. Be glad to do that for you. And then frequently I'll give them my email address because the messaging system on ACX is very clunky. There's a lot of unnecessary overhead. It's difficult to maneuver for some people. And a lot of times they would much rather just deal with me through email. Uh, so I include that within this, sometimes within this note, usually within the conversation early on, should we get past the audition stage. All right, so I have a message in there. I'm going to browse to the file. It will upload. All right. One last look, make sure everything's right. I have the file. Make sure this is the correct file name that you chose. Send them the wrong file, and you probably won't get the gig. Uh, I've checked the spelling on my message. Everything looks all right. So we'll submit. And from here, it's just a little bit of a waiting game and see what they think. Maybe you'll get a chance to redo it. Maybe you'll get a gig from it. Uh, we'll see where this one picks up in a few days, depending on how quickly the author gets back to me. And we'll move on from there. So several weeks have passed since I submitted that audition. I thought it was dead, but this author uh, only interacted, it seemed like, with ACX or with me, at least on the weekend. So there was quite a bit of time that passed between messages and therefore it took a while to get the offer, to get the contract, everything set up and recorded. But now this book has been approved. It is available for sale. ACX has really in, increased their speed on getting things into the retail space over the last few months. And this has been on sale for a little less than a week. Today's August 26th. It's been on sale since the 20th. Um, let's take a look at the Amazon link for the book itself. A few weeks ago when we first looked at this, there were no ratings. Uh, there were no reviews, and now in that time frame, he's garnered quite a few ratings and quite a good score for a self-published book uh, of this type, in my opinion, from what I've seen. One thing I like to look at when there are ratings, if you're not uh, already doing this, is checking out the date range of the ratings. And as you look at these, most of these are actual, most likely, readers, not paid ratings, this didn't go from 0 to 25 or 50 ratings in a day, which generally indicates someone's buying their ratings, I believe. Uh, so you look at these dates, they're spread out around in time. There's actual paragraphs written in real words <laughs> that uh, indicate the person did read the book, had some cogent comments on it, and some interesting insights and some quite high ratings. So... Uh, this book actually is reviewed and accepted better than I thought it would be in my, ex uh, in my experience. 
another interesting thing to look at back here with the sales. We looked at the sales ranks earlier and it was zero. Now it's in the hundred thousands. Uh, again, an acceptable rating and some high ratings in particular categories. And unlike a lot of authors, these categories actually relate to the book at hand. One of the schemes, I believe, uh, to get a high rating is to find a category that doesn't have much competition and place a book in that category, whether that applies to the book topic or not. This is not the case here. Uh, these correspond exactly to what the book is about and has some good ratings. Now, that's, this is the Amazon page for the print book itself. If you stay on Amazon but look at the Audible book, the audio book, we see things a little bit differently. Now it's the same book, but notice uh, here I'm credited with the narration because we're referring now to the audiobook, so things are different. One of those noticeable differences will be the seller's information. Let's just compare these real quick. The print book has uh, these ratings and 135,500 overall in the best seller's rank. Now, this is different information. This is relating to the audiobook. Don't get yourself confused in your audiobook versus the author's print book and think something's happening that's not. Make sure you keep these straight uh, because it's important for your career as an audiobook narrator to make sure you're looking at the information that is appropriate. The reviews, however, are the same. Not sure why Amazon does it this way, but the reviews you see for the print book will be the same as the reviews you see for the audiobook. Sometimes you will get a comment in here about the narration, but most times you will not. For the Audible platform where the book is sold, again, completely different uh, information as far as the particular process goes. There's no reviews, no ratings here yet. This is not uncommon for a new book. Uh, it takes a while to build those up. In fact, months, if not years, to get uh, uh, kind of feedback within Audible. But you can see this book is on sale, has been for a week or so, and hopefully with the good reviews and acceptance it got early on from the print version, the Audible audio version will do well as well for the author, Mr. Hinchliffe. Thanks for tuning in to Channel 14 again, and uh, feel free to leave any comments or questions in the notes below, and we'll see you in a few days.